What up, guys? I'm back with another ranking. Uh, this one's going to be Iron Maiden, because I'm going to see Iron Maiden in two days. Which, I thought I would do a ranking of Iron Maiden's albums. I've done it in the past. It got deleted because of YouTube's horrible, no swearing policy, which is stupid. So, to start it off, I think they have 16. I got to check. Sixteen studio albums from Iron Maiden. Um, there will be a big surprise in here. An album that I don't like more than a lot of them. Um, number sixteen, Dance to Death. Of course, this album is just so not good. It's just so freaking bad. Like I, the, the I gotta say, this album is pretty bad. Like. Iron Maiden did make a really bad album, and this is it. All of them from here on are kind of, like, kind of harder to rank, but this one is just pretty much awful. <laughs> the title track's great, but there is just, oh, why? Why is some of the songs I sound like they do? Damn. Number 15, or my second least favorite Iron Maiden record. The Final Frontier. The new, re a newer one. The second newest one. Um, just a weird feel to it. I just... I don't think the space theme actually worked on here. I, it didn't... I just don't really consider this a really good Iron Maiden album. It's, it's okay. It's decent. Yeah. Here is an early Maiden album. Number 14, No Prayers for the Dying, of course it's down here. I actually do like this album a lot. Public Enema number one, just can't stand it. Hooks in You cannot stand it. The Assassin cannot stand it. There's a lot of stuff in here that is just bad. Bring Your Daughter to the Slaughter is good. Mother Rush is good. Tail Gunner, Holy Smoke, No Prayer for the Dying. Those are good. Run Silent, Run Deep is also pretty good. And here's our first shocker. And number 13, or the fourth least for, uh, the fourth least good Iron Maiden album, in my opinion, is Peace of Mind. Uh, I just never really liked this album. I never really did because of like the slowness of the last half after Trooper. It just had four songs that were just kind of lackluster in a row, which doesn't really seem like made it at all to be doing that. It's pretty, it's good. The Trooper, Where Eagles Dare, Relevations, Flight of Icarus, Die With Your Boots On. Those are all classics and all great songs, but then just the bottom half is just really not that good. And I will be showing the Trooper cover art in here. Because this is a reissue. These are all reissues. They do a good job reissuing, reissuing these. Number 12. And this is where it goes to 9 out of 10 and higher. <sighs> Number 12 is X Factor. I really do like this album. I can listen to it front to back. Um, Sign of the Cross... Amazing song. Lord of the Flies, probably one of my favorite Iron Maiden songs. Um, Warden's of War. Let's see. Man on the Edge. Just anything off this. This is a good record. I don't know why people always put this lower on the list. This is pretty good. It's dark. It's a dark Iron Maiden album, and it works. Number 11. The second Blaze Bailey album, Virtual Eleven. Um, Future Real, amazing song. Angel and the Gambler, a lot, a lot of people hate that song. I don't hate it at all. I wish they would play it live. I wish they would play that song live at the show that I'm going to go to, the PA show. I wish they would. I wish they would play that song. 
on the PA show because I would want to hear that song live. <clears throat> Just by how the vocals are on that song and how the guitars match up with it, it seems weird and it's not like other Iron Maiden songs, but it, in my opinion, it's a good song. The Klansman, favorite, one of my favorite songs ever. Klansman, they'll play it. I know they will. Um, and no, as in the States, there's another meaning to the Klansman, which that's not what it means. It means something about the Scottish clans during the Scottish Revolution. Not the, uh, not those fucking clowns that run around nowadays. I call them fucking clowns. Like, serious fucking clowns. Sorry to put this in the video, but... I had to clear that up, because I've... Because I know someone will be commenting that shit on my video, because... They always do that shit. Eleven. Number eleven. Or the... I know. That... This is number ten, I'm pretty sure. Number 10, The Book of Souls. If Eternity Shall Fall. Amazing. Amazing. Just amazing all the way through. Two thousand fifteen brought probably the good comeback a good comeback record for Iron Maiden. And yep, my beard is kind of messing with me right now, but Bear with me, and what's with my hair back here? Put that forward. Ah, shit. Yeah, I get some issues sometimes. Um, just anything. Again, anything. It's an I-10 record. There's one. There's a couple problems with it. And number nine is a matter of life and death. This is where you see a lot of the newer Iron Maiden records here. Just the Pilgrim. The Pilgrim on here is probably the best song on this record. The re Reincarnation of Benjamin Brig. <clears throat> I'm a little sick, so. Brighter than a thousand suns, these colors don't run. Oh, great songs. Number eight. Number eight is Killers. The first one in the Paul Diano era of Iron Maiden. There's just some songs on here that I just don't really listen to that often. That's why I put it down here. But there is some good stuff like Wrath Child, Murders in the Room Morgue, Another Life, uh, Killers, Purgatory, those songs. Mostly every other stuff is forgettable. So yeah. Seven. Number of the Beast. Um... It's the most overplayed album on Iron Maiden's catalog, other than the one with Trooper on it. Um, Run of the Hills. That I've listened to that a thousand times. It just wears on me every time. It list, uh, every time I hear it, it's. But there's other like there's other problems with the album like uh, Gangland. I don't like that song. Um. Number like Invaders, Children of the Dam, The Prisoner, Twenty Two Akeda Avenue, Number of the Beast, Run of the Hills are all good songs. Uh, Total Eclipse and Hall Be That Am the Only Problem is Gangland. I think they should have added the other song they put in the EP into this one. Oh yeah, the cover art of uh, Eddie holding Satan's head. Love that cover art. Or Eddie playing with Satan on a puppet strings. Pretty good hurt work. Of that seven. Yep. That's six. Now number six 
is the first Iron Maiden album. Ah, what to say about this? It has stuff like Iron Maiden, uh, Strange World, Phantom of the Opera, Running Free, Remember Tomorrow. It's a great song. Sanctuary is on this one, and usually not on the other copies. And Prowler. I don't know why they never put Sanctuary on this. Sanctuary is a pretty good song. But yeah, Iron Maiden's first record. Great. And uh, number five. We're the fifth best Iron Maiden record. Power Slave. And a lot of the people consider this their best album. I don't. Run back to the village is the only problem in this one. I cannot stand that song. Just how they sing that song is just weird. Flash of the Blade, The Duelists, Power Slave, the best song on the album, Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. <clears throat> Two Minutes to Midnight and Ace is High. Great stuff. Number four, or the fourth best Iron Maiden album. Fear of the Dark. Why? Why, why? why did I put this one up this high? It's because uh, they have stuff like Judas Be My Guide. One of my favorite Iron Maiden songs ever. Hope they play it. Probably won't. Weekend Warrior is terrible. Um, Fear of the Dark is pretty good. The Fugitive, Chains of Misery, The Apparition. Anything on here is amazing. Ah, uh, number three is Somewhere in Time. Uh, there's, this album is perfect. The first, the first perfect one on this list. It's just more heavy maiden than usual. Let's see if they have a better artwork on here. Yeah, they do. They have pretty good artwork right there. Vetti is a robot. This is when Iron Maiden was their best. Just when Bruce had a really good voice. Like, the voice that could do the, like, really high, like, really, really high vocals. Like, that's on this album, Caught Somewhere in Time, Wasted Years. <clears throat> Alexander the Great's on here as well, which, that's another good song. Um, so yeah. Great stuff on this one. Next... Number two or the second best Iron Maiden album ever. Seventh Son of a Seventh Son. You'd expect the uh, number one to be a lot farther down the list, but it's not. It's not for me. I consider the uh, that the number one album to be farther, like re like number one on the list. Good cover art inside. Uh, has some good stuff like Moonchild and Infinite Dreams. Can I play with Madness? The evil that men do. <clears throat> Just listen to this full album, guys. Just check this album out if you haven't. If you're looking at this, you've probably have already seen this album. And number one, or the best Iron Maiden album ever, is Brave New World. The comeback album of Bruce in year 2000. This is when Bruce came back to Iron Maiden. And when they added the second... And the, when they added another guitarist to make three guitars at once. To make it a lot louder. Have more projection value. How they followed up this album with... Uh, Dance of Death, which is my least favorite, was kind of sad. They should have followed it up with a more of a push. But you... I don't know why they did that. The favorite one off here is probably The Ghosts of the Navigator, or Nomad, or even The Thin Line Between Love and Hate. Anything on here. This is by far one of my favorite albums ever. Like, out of every album that every band's ever done, this is probably one of my favorites. So yeah, that's how I rank Iron Maiden. Yeah, it's a 15 minute video. I knew it would be. 
it's going to take a long time to upload, of course, because my internet's slow, so, bye guys!